you know, 7% to 8%, sometimes it was around 10% and then infrastructure investment, uh, it was a big amount that we had the previous governments, uh, uh, the invest infrastructure investment, uh, what they have invested on for the corona, not for the corona, like for the construction infrastructure. And then uh, like a lot of big projects and then the uh, previously because of the Easter Sunday attack and then uh, like Chinese contractors and many, many social economic conditions, uh, there were big uh, challenges and then uh, construction started to take a deep breath and then all of a sudden this corona hit, right? And then uh, what we usually do is when, like when, when you are in a setback or we usually say, okay, like when, when we see a, some kind of issue in Sri Lanka, we take, okay, uh, in Australia, that is, that is not going to happen. In America, it's not happening. Uh, we take example from outside. Right? We always say outside is better. That is why people, as soon as they get the degree, they go out, right? So they, they think, okay, that we have this uh, ideal world outside. But if you take these numbers, right? Uh, so these are the, like this heaven, we call them, right? So this, uh, I'm not letting these countries down. I really like US. I have been to Spain. I have been to Italy. I have been to uh, UK. These are really good countries with good, very, really good uh, working, uh, working conditions as well as living conditions, right? But what happened was, and then issue is, well, I, I, can't, I really can't understand why these countries got this kind of seriously infected because uh, they, they like, like I'm come, I, my, I do have a background of disaster management, right? So they have developed these disaster management guidelines for the world, right? So then they have all these, all these uh, guidelines, they were well prepared. Like if you take health, uh, health, uh, uh, health index for the preparedness, US is number one, UK is number two. And there's all these uh, countries now getting seriously infected uh, within top 10, top 20, right? But uh, they got infected, right? So then we, we, we have to understand why, what are the reasons? One, one, being, one may be being the, they were among these, uh, uh, these uh, latitudes and longitudes uh, uh, and these specific climatic conditions. We don't know. These are not still proven. Uh, we've been a hot, in a hot climate maybe coronavirus cannot be surviving these conditions. We don't know, right? Uh, but in any way, uh, so these countries got severely affected. Now with the, uh, the, the number is four, four million uh, yesterday. Now the now case has been uh, 4.1 million probably. Every 12 days, every 13 days, this, uh, we are getting one million in, uh, number. Um, we, are, uh, we are reporting one million cases, right? In US, 78,794 deaths. Can you imagine that? Like US has a massive uh, budget for this, uh, their uh, uh, like warfare, right? So then for their security budget is massive, right? And then uh, if you take put all these uh, deaths from start to uh, establish in US until uh, Vietnam War, or probably from 9-11 attack, if you put everything together, we might not get this kind of a number. 78,794 uh, 78, deaths. Big number. So the, 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 the prediction is it will go around 100,000 to 200,000, right? So UK previously predicted around 20,000. Now it is 31,000. Can you imagine? 31,000 deaths. Right, Italy is around thirty thousand, and Spain twenty six. Like these are big numbers, right? Massive numbers. Right? So people are dying, and then what happened is, uh, like then then if you take Sri Lanka for an example, so uh, Sri Lanka they have taken like let's put the politics aside, right? So then we are not I'm, I'm, I don't, like uh, we all have our political viewpoints, but we have to say good thing, like we have to accept good things as good things. So, uh, when this is the first, uh, like this is the comparison of uh, Asian countries, and then first case reported in, uh, in, in Sri Lanka, the Chinese woman in February, even before that, uh, they have taken uh, uh, national uh, recommendations because I, I, I closely work with the disaster management, uh, uh, Ministry of Health Disaster Management Unit. Uh, so, Yes, there's a good question. So I will, I will get back to that question uh, uh, soon. Uh, so 
So Sri Lanka, they have taken measures. So they, they, they have implemented the certain measures at the airport and then they were trying, they, were, they have tried to uh, uh, establish quarantine centers. And then we, we, we do remember that there was a, a certain politicians who were opposing that because of that reason, it got delayed. And then because of that reason, certain papers and were not quarantined and they were asked to self quarantine at homes because of that reason, massive breakdown happened. Right, but anyway, Sri Lanka has taken Sri Lanka has taken measures. So we were like, if you take uh, the uh, health system in Sri Lanka, it is really, really in a higher level. So uh, our quarantine centers can be taken as case studies for other countries. So then uh, we are, we are uh, we have set some examples for taking the uh, uh, good measures. Uh, but we we cannot say that we have like if you take uh, Vietnam for an example. Vietnam is they have completely managed the situation well, well in advance, and they have very good uh, control. So, yes, so like we, we, like there are certain countries that uh, perform better than us. But as a small country with a, uh, a very low GDP, we have done a, quite a good job. Now the point is, so then now we have gone for a lockdown. Now we need to, uh, like, we are planning to come out, right? So every country is uh, planning to come out. So this is, this is the situation like, uh, so then uh, this is the first case reported and then uh, whether they have gone for national lockdown and for over regional lockdown. And then when like if we can't, like the prediction is this, uh, this, this kind of the viruses of this, this nature or mass, SARS or Corona, the viruses of this nature, even though we, uh, they, like, even for small, so as far as I know, SARS and mass, they still don't have vaccines, right? So then uh, this will, what will happen is it will go up and with some with, with, with time, it will go down. So that is how it is. So then there's a natural healing process, right? So uh, it will take like the according to prediction, it will stay with us now. Uh, first case reported uh, like five and a half months ago. So we are living with Corona for five and a half months and we have lived with it for uh, roughly one to one and a half years, right? Then the point is, if you take like Germany, this is one of the best case, uh, case studies where you can uh, take. We are uh, first case reported. They have not. Uh, the, so then the the, the point uh, the role of leadership, right? Angela Merkel, who is the uh, chancellor of EU, Germany, she has not gone for a re, uh, national wide nationwide lockdown. The, the, what they have what they have done is, they have uh, tested as much as possible using this, uh, they have used this pool testing tech, uh, method. method. Uh, so then they have tested as much as billions in, uh, tested. And then when, when, like they have tested a certain set of people. And then if they, if, uh, they have taken uh, all samples from uh, that certain uh, village or whatever. And then uh, if the cases are negative, they tested again, negative tested again. Likewise, if the one, uh, one case positive, they ask, uh, like they test again, for the everyone, and then they have taken that sample very serious. So then uh, they have taken, uh, they have tried to isolate that sample, something like that. So then basically they can easily, it was a very logical uh, certain way of approaching that. And as you can see, they, they were the very uh, first few countries to reopen the country. But now the, with the time, now the cases are reporting again in Germany and South Korea. South Korea is also the same. Uh, they are reporting with the lockdown, easing out this lockdown uh, situation. But we have we have no other choice than living with this uh, corona uh, uh, epidemic, uh, just like uh, the way we are living with dengue situation, right? So then, uh, uh, this uh, Peter, Doctor Peter, is a, a, a scholar from Oxford University of Oxford, and he he said like what we have to do is we have to test and trace and isolate. So uh, that is what Germany or the any country who have controlled this uh, situation uh, well, uh, ha, what they, they have what they have followed, right? First they have tested, and then when they have, uh, if their cases are negative, uh, they have, so then they put into a certain basket and then they have tested again. So the uh, WHO guideline is test, test, test. So then uh, tested again, tested again. If all three tests were negative, so then we they have, uh, they have released that sample. So if test, 
positive, then they have put them into a certain basket and then tested again, certain people are negative, then they have put it to likewise. So then uh, they were tested, they were close associates were traced and then isolated. So they this process they have followed, then, then only they can, uh, uh, that those countries, they have overcome this, they have done this. And then this is very important, transparent communication and public trust. It is going to be hard in places where responses, responses are mismanaged or politicized like the US and UK, right? So transparent communication, right? So you have to communicate what your strategy very well to the community. If you, if you, if the community feels that there is a uh, hidden agenda going behind this, like for example, if we, let's be frank, we are uh, now for, for a certain period of time, uh, so authorities were not uh, not ready to go for lockdown, right? So then we realized that uh, we, we as the uh, general public, we realized that okay, there's a hidden agenda because there there, there is an election coming because of that reason. Like let's be frank with that, right? Because of that reason, they, that is why they are not going for this lockdown. So then. People start to question that. When the social media start to question that, uh, the authorities had no choice than going for lockdown, right? So they have taken that decision. So then we have to give the credit for that. So then after a certain period of time, uh, in April 19, then then I, I then we were hearing like from the media and then from this printed media and electronic media, okay, God, like now the corona is over, he's going to say bye bye and go. And then uh, some people, the politicians start to uh, appear in the, uh, in the new news channels and then talking about this, uh, having elections and all that, they were putting the deadlines for this and all that. Again, the new cases reported, right? So like then people start to question their transparency. So basically, the countries who have done nicely control this issue uh, because of uh, they have uh, transparent communication and then public trust. If you take Korea, for an example, they have the trust for the government uh, or the uh, government or system in, in a very high level. But these uh, two countries, two leading countries, US and UK, so they 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 had they always gone. Uh, so they they had a they they have issue with China, right? So then, in, in, because of they are having issue with China. They call this Trump called openly this uh, Corona as the Chinese virus. So then they, because of they are having opposing views to China, they have gone a war, kind of a war with uh, this Corona. Because of that reason, like having issue with China is one one uh, one uh, one aspect, one 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 part of the this equation. But having issue with with the disease is a is a foolish. Like you are going to war with the disease is a foolish decision. So that is why. US and UK is not, they are now uh, top, uh, like having uh, highest death rates, right? So they have politicized this uh, situation. So then uh, there was a question, which is a very valuable question. It's asking these, uh, aren't these all countries practice capitalism, capitalism, where they don't really care about the well being of the citizens? So it's a, uh, it's a tough question to answer as well. So we cannot say uh, all the capitalist countries are don't care about the people. It's like then we are we are kind of moving away from our scope uh, because uh, it will be a political lecture, and then I am not a political expert as well. So we just give our own uh, viewpoints. So when we observe uh, these uh, countries now who are in trouble, they do have the capitalist approach uh, approach to the markets, right? So then uh, that is. That is true, uh, but uh, we cannot say they don't care about people. But their priorities are different than uh, Sri Lanka, right? So then we can we can put it that way to be politically correct, right? So then in Sri Lanka, we care about our elders. We don't like our people to die to die, and then now we we have uh, public healthcare system, public uh, education system, and all that. But in uh, those countries that, uh, that who are struggling at the moment. Uh, they they charge for the uh, health. Uh, if they don't have, if you don't have uh, insurance, uh, you will be not uh, not uh, uh, treated at the hospital. Even though you are going to die, uh, you will be not treated. Uh, and yes, so then uh, their priorities are different. So then uh, they like uh, when they have issues, they were not, they were asked to stay at hospital, stay at homes, not to come uh, to the hospitals, right? So then they, they are, so they, they do have a different approach than us. So then uh, 
maybe because of that, uh, they are struggling. And then their priorities, as since they've been a capitalist country, their priority is economy, right? So then they give a, uh, they give a higher priority to the economy. And then uh, now Elon Musk, he has a kind of a threat uh, to push to the government to reopen California to he wants to start his comp uh, the factories, right? So likewise, so their their priorities are different, even though they are having big uh, uh, like big issues. But if you take Scandinavian countries, Norway, Sweden, or like uh, in the, those countries, they 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 are they have well managed. So then, even though they they are so called capitalist country, they do treat uh, uh, care about the, the people as well, right? So the bigger like if you like, I really like that question because it takes uh, us to a, like give us, us a different dimension. We are like construction. If you take comes back to the construction, construction. I have mentioned that it is uh, it is uh, very sensitive to the socio-economic conditions of the uh, in in the uh, in the surrounding, right? So then uh, whether whether you are being the um, top most structural engineer, whether you be in the top most geotechnical engineer, if you if there is no construction going on, so you, there is no you will not get any jobs, right? So basically, it all depends on. Uh, the outside, the socio-economic condition. So you need to be aware about what is happening outside and you have a good sense about them. Otherwise, uh, you'll be left alone, right? So uh, then coming back to this uh, corona situation. So this is the most important uh, situation, uh, statement issued by this uh, Dr. Peter. It says, uh, remember, a lockdown is not a solution. It's a, an emergency stopgap that buys time to develop a strategy and prepare. So, so lockdown is not a solution. It's like uh, we just, uh, like lo locking down is the easiest thing, right? We can close down the airports, uh, we can close down the ports, and then we can close down all the uh, factories, and then we can stop the country. And then uh, what will happen? So then how, how uh, the farmers, uh, how, how the uh, day workers, how the uh, construction workers going to survive? So that is the question. So how these uh, all the vendors who, who used to sell uh, uh, goods to the, uh, the general public and survive day to day, uh, they have, they have uh, uh, lived their life day to day using the earning day to day amount, right? So how are they going to survive? That's the question. Locking down is easy. Starting from the top uh, businessman uh, to, the, uh, to the lowest level uh, vendor, now they are, everyone is struggling. You guys might be, uh, uh, privilege, uh, like you guys still the students. We, I am, I might be privileged because I am a lecturer, so I, I can teach you guys, right? But for others, the factories are like if you take uh, uh, small factories, like uh, uh, like uh, some factories, they were ready for uh, like they were they have uh, targeted April season, and then the last uh, year uh, they they have been working for targeting this April season. Now there is no April season, no how to do nothing, right? So then, uh, and then uh, let's say uh, 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 like all these cultural festivals, right? So then religious and cultural festivals, people targeting certain businesses for these, but everything gone, right? So then how they how these people survive? They have got bank loans for these business expansions and then renting. So then they, how they survive, right? So then locking down is not a solution. Then what is the solution? So. What happened with the lockdown? It will give us some time to think and then uh, strategize and then develop an exit strategy and then how to come out. So then now it's time to restart the country. I have seen a good campaign uh, launch with uh, Kumar Sangakkara where it says uh, re restarting the country. So we have to restart, but of course, uh, there is a risk is there. So one small case can uh, destroy everything, right? So. The last point is what is the what the new normal should look like for the next couple of years. So new normal, that is the new term, right? So then uh, I, I saw a meme sharing in the Facebook. It says, uh, I miss uh, going to the uni university. I miss going to the, uh, having fun at the uh, canteens. I miss uh, uh, holding my hand uh, of my better half and then uh, uh, like having chat and all this, uh, doing assignments and all that, copying as a student doing, basically copying assignments and all that. No? So, so now new normal is different. So you guys are now doing lectures, attending lectures online. So this is the new normal, right? So then uh, that is how, that is this, this like still there is no uh, time period given to start the university, right? 
So we have to wait until uh, what will happen, right? So then new normal is different and we might have to live with like this for uh, for next couple of years. And then uh, like uh, uh, this you, uh, with the people who came uh, from United Kingdom, uh, from Britain, uh, one of my students was there uh, like uh, from study who, who was studying at uh, Cambridge. Uh, he called me and then said, sir, now uh, Cambridge has closed until October. So all the lectures, uh, student was asked to stay at home. All the lectures will be conducted at online. And then we are not, we were asked to uh, stay at home. So then uh, without, like, there's no point staying at uh, Britain. So then we came back to Sri Lanka so we can have a comfortable uh, uh, life with our parents. And then while at, like, so then research will go on. Their studies will go on, but the, the, we are, the location is no longer, uh, uh, no longer valid. So there, there is a new normal. So that person is studying at Cambridge, but he's staying at uh, uh, Sri Lanka, right? So I have seen, uh, I'm not sure if that is your batch. I have seen in LinkedIn where some of your uh, batchmates has uh, posting certificates from University of Toronto, University of Michigan, where they have followed some short courses, right? So that is the new normal, right? So then uh, that, is, that is going to be uh, the next thing in, in the next few, few years. So living in Corona, living with Corona uh, in the construction context. So working from home. Uh, for us uh, lecturers or IT people, it might be difficult, but uh, we can do. But for construction workers, you can't work from home. Like planning, you can do, estimating, you can do, uh, all the MEP plan, uh, designs and everything you can do. But construction workers, they have to come out and do this uh, construction, make it happen, right? So then, how, how, how otherwise, uh, uh, you, you, because it is a, uh, it's a, not a virtual reality, it's a, it's a reality. Right? So they, they have to come out and then be productive, be efficient, and then be safe. Safe. Now there's a new dimension to the safeness, right? So usually we call it uh, uh, time, cost, and quality. So the quality was my today's lecture. And then uh, there are safety dimension, where, like which we have discussed in our first lecture. And then the sustainability component came because we have we have start, we have uh, completely started to destroy the, uh, the environment right so then now uh, the ocean layer now it is going to uh, it was healing back uh, and then uh, this uh, all these, uh, these uh, the pollution which we have doing for last which we have been doing for last couple of years now they are healing back now there is another dimension which the, because of the uh, nature it was again given us a punishment okay now live with corona so uh, there is new dimension, so we have to take, uh, we have to think about that as well, right? So then, how are we going to live with Corona when the when the uh, construction is highly lab, being lab, highly labor intensive? I have covered this part at the, uh, in my previous lecture. So, without people getting together, how can you keep a so one meter social distancing here, right? So because uh, like if there is a something going goes wrong, you have you can't keep a so one meter social distancing. How can you, how can uh, people who are doing rebar or, or uh, do this, okay, one meter gap, one meter gap, please keep one meter gap, you can't do it, right? So then uh, you can't keep a, a one meter gap here. So that's very challenging. And uh, uh, as I mentioned, one million direct and indirect employees, 650,000 to 700 construction workers, foreign construction workers were there previously. And then 62.8% uh, of Sri Lankan population is unskilled. Labor skill is uh, labor cost is around 30 to 50 percent. I am going fast because I have covered this part in the previous lecture of total project cost. So labor is very important component of construction in current construction construction context. So then, with Corona, how are we going to survive, right? So you guys, in next uh, within next two years, you are going to uh, to the job market. Next within next six months, you are going for the industrial training. How are you going to uh, uh, how? How are we going to do the training without construction activities going on? It's not virtual reality. Like for the computer science people, they can work from home. Their industry training might be at home, right? But for you guys, it is not. It's different, right? So previously, we had this health and safety issues, right? So then, like if we ask the workers to wear gloves, they don't. Uh, they don't wear gloves. If you ask them to wear helmets, they don't wear helmets. So lot of issues and then it like as as uh, as previously discussed like with PPE it's uh, very difficult to uh, uh, 
function. Now the PP has new new dimension as well because of this uh, Corona situation. Now you have to wear face mask and then uh, wash uh, hands uh, all the time and then wear the gloves and then goggles and all that. So it's very very uh, uh, difficult task. And then uh, current working conditions of the uh, laborers. Current in the sense like not not right now after this Corona pre-corona situation which I am talking about. So, uh, working conditions are really bad. So, then their the dormitory is uh, highly congested. Like, there is no one meter social distancing. There were no beds even. They were given a plank and they were asked to uh, uh, sleep there, right? Uh, and then uh, their toilets are not clean and then uh, there is no wash basins to uh, do this hand washing. So, how can they uh, keep this uh, social distancing? How, how can they keep this uh, all these hygienic uh, conditions which are needed uh, for in order to be prevent uh, in order to avoid this uh, 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 corona situation and then productivity so even with this situation current situation being productive is difficult for construction workers imagine the situation of, uh, 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 with this call living with, when you are living with uh, corona right so uh, and then next thing is the quality, right? So you might be thinking, you guys are like still students and then you might be thinking, okay, now university, you don't need to start. And then like, uh, we, the country needs to, like, like, you might be only looking at one dimension of the uh, this equation. But when you are a father, when you are a, a married person or when you are in a higher level of administration, you, you feel, feel the burden because right now we are in a very, uh, very bad situation, right? So because, uh, uh, even right now, uh, like we, we uh, our it is predicted that our previous our economic growth rate is around three point two, around two percent. Uh, so it is predicted like it will go down to one point two percent, right? So uh, uh, the uh, the USD has hit uh, around two hundred rupees. Now it has gone uh, come came down uh, I think around one hundred ninety. So we, we, uh, we our exports were uh, well below the imports. So there is a trade deficit. And then uh, imagine a situation that is it has been predicted that a country will uh, entire world will go back uh, go into a condition uh, uh, into like 1930s where you had uh, war post war condition, right? So then uh, negative uh, one uh, zero economic growth has been predicted. Uh, predicted. Uh, India predicted uh, around zero economic growth. So we are in a really, uh, really bad position. Like it was, like, it was like we are living in this uh, like a big bowl. It is uh, boiling, but we still don't feel the. Uh, we feel still still don't feel it, right? So because we are we are like in our own bubble, and then uh, we think okay, so we think it's going to be fine, and then we are getting far. Like because we are living in a welfare society, right? Uh, like uh, we we were, we have been asked to uh, like uh, five thousand. Uh, like government is giving us five thousand, uh, like so we, we we feel okay now we don't need to go out and we need to function. No, it is not. Country needs to restart, and then there are new developments as well. So if you take uh, like the, so starting from this picture, it has been started in uh, China in uh, December, right? And then uh, spread into the Italy, and then uh, in Iran, South Korea, and then uh, back to UK, and then uh, US, and now Russia. Right, Russia, the so-called uh, Putin's uh, Russia, right? So then, uh, uh, but we will remember Russian deaths are like even though Russian uh, uh, cases are very high, it's among I think uh, two hundred thousand something, but there are uh, deaths around two thousand. That is, I don't know whether they are reporting or not, but uh, their deaths are really really low. So that is a very really good uh, situation. India, so our neighboring country, our good old friend, uh, India. So right, so then uh, that is now the, it's going to be uh, the newest hotspot. This is the, these are yesterday numbers: sixty-two thousand cases and uh, two thousand deaths, and it is increasing. Right, so then uh, we are in a really bad position. So in India is uh, uh, India is somewhere here, Bangladesh here, and Russia is here, and Sri Lanka is here if you are following so vietnam is here so vietnam is the kind of a winner like if you have taken uh, uh, if you if you want to like sri lanka sri lanka we did a really bad thing where we try to uh, okay we are like we, we, we used like we try to call ourselves a winner right like before finishing the race 
this is not a 100 meter race this is a marathon and then we don't know how long we have to run so none none of the countries uh, still have not finished the game still everyone is running but at the moment in in this situation vietnam is managing australia managing new zealand managing south korea they are all managing india is uh, is one 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 area which we need to uh, focus on because india is very close to sri lanka and then we don't know after we open up our airports after we open up our ports and then they come like you like indians they we use like they can come by boats right now even right now the navy is looking uh, protecting the in the amana area right so uh, we are living in a big uh, risk right uh, malaria we eradicated completely because of indian situation Uh, indian construction workers we got malaria a uh, few cases reported in sri lanka right just like that even though we completely manage uh, corona in the future we don't know because of india you don't know what will happen right so then is everything is open at the moment so there's another country which i want you guys to for, keep your attention in singapore this is the singapore they have been managing so it is they you used to go like this like previously the we we like in this uh, like in previously singapore was the case study singapore was the best country to follow singapore like singapore prime minister was so happy and then uh, they were talking so he was talking about this uh, working capital and all that now singapore they started to reporting uh, cases right singapore is uh, again there is the second wave so it came as first wave so they manage it like if you would look into this uh, graph so manage like uh, let's say if, like when we started to locking down let's say this around uh, march uh, uh, 16th or 14th somewhere this uh, this is uh, this somewhere around which we started lock down the country right so it, that period singapore is well managed in the situation march april so wow singapore is doing really well and then all of a sudden april it has started to go up right that is because they they miss one point one important point that is construction workers or the immigrants who are living in dormitories jam pack uh, i saw a meme showing like sad impact that is the term so sad impact in these dormitories right so for some reason uh, singapore government they they didn't uh, focus about these construction workers or the immigrant not only construction immigrant Uh, workers with work permits and it has started to spread now uh, it has gone out of uh, proportion so singapore is going up right so we never know so we are at the moment we are doing really well so we never know and then this situation we are unfortunately uh, because of uh, when we try to manage this uh, some of the uh, people from uh, sidu uh, uh, suduel area Uh, they are from coming from a different uh, social cultural background and then navy yeah, as you can see they were not uh, per, like they are not using a better personal protective equipment they are just using this surgical mask and then they one gloves and all that so this is not the way they should go to uh, uh, catch these people so they are coming from different social uh, cultural background right so then right now uh, these are yesterday numbers this, this might have gone up uh, today right so that is the situation in this uh, uh, corona uh, condition right so 414 naval person have tested positive so yesterday it is around 50% of the uh, total uh, infected people right so why 414 so they have tried to catch these people and then one two people got infected and then they have gone to the uh, welser camp and then at the camp at the dormitory they were using uh, same uh, washing uh, like uh, the uh, toilets or the uh, washing wash, uh, uh, bar, uh, like bathing places and then laundry facilities same kitchen and all that because of that reason it start to spread in that uh, uh, naval camp right and then naval camps completely sealed down how can we say that how can we ensure that it will not happen to uh, like this kind of situation even when we open up the country Uh, we open up the construction uh, activities this will not happen so at the dormitories at this uh, uh, what happened to this navy, navy people right so what happened to say singapore as well as uh, these people so one one big concern and then uh, let let me bring bring, uh, bring uh, dengue also into the picture right so dengue is one of the uh, biggest uh, 
uh, epidemics uh, which have happened, which has been, we have been, we have been living for a certain period of time. So construction sites is one of the major contributors for this uh, 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 dengue uh, situation, right? Schools is the other other contributor because the construction site they have a lot of areas where uh, water get uh, can be clogged, right? Uh, where we have this uh, like uh, unfinished uh, concrete surfaces and uh, this uh, uh, drainage facilities and then all that it's not clean. So this is the these are the so-called dormitories of construction workers. Can you see? So the so these are the uh, mosquito nets and this is where they sleep. Can you can you imagine uh, 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 Corona situation right here? So like I mean, how can they keep the social distancing like this? No. So it's a big concern. One thing is dengue because the most uh, uh, it is like the northeast uh, like this uh, southeast sorry southeast monsoon is going to be activated very soon. Yeah, it is. It has been predicted that we will be getting more than 100 millimeter uh, rain. So that is like if it is 100 millimeter for two two couple of days, that means we are getting flood, right? So then with the with the rain, water will start to uh, clog in these uh, uh, unfinished areas, and then the mosquito. Uh, the breedings will be happen and then dengue start to spread around. So then one, in one end, we have to battle with uh, dengue and then one end we have to battle with corona, right? So luckily at this, uh, luckily uh, this uh, currently, uh, we, are, we have this uh, very high heat wave, like heat wave is going around the country. So that is because of that reason as well as for some reason, luckily this uh, northeast, uh, southeast monsoon is kind of uh, delayed. Uh, uh, like if you if you remember last like around 2016 2017 we got massive floods during may april may april used to be like heavily thundering and all that right so then uh, 2016 17 we got a massive flood but 1920 luckily luckily we got we didn't get much of the rain so if the if uh, rain comes so then we are in a really bad situation so coming back to uh, corona uh, so then two guidelines were issued by the, uh, uh, in the national level. One is from the uh, uh, Ministry of Health and one is from the uh, Construction Industry Development Authority or CEDA. So both of them, uh, like uh, both of them are comprehensive guidelines. Uh, and then one, th uh, this uh, uh, Ministry of Health guideline is uh, mainly focusing about the, uh, like not only specific to construction, but uh, CEDA one is specific to construction. I will forward these both of the guidelines to uh, batch reps, Amila and Rajika, uh, and then they will they will spread it around you guys. Uh, I could not find the uh, English version of this uh, uh, this guideline issued by the national guideline. So they, they are definitely they are, there must be a, uh, English as well. Uh, but uh, I, I, when I, as soon as I find it, I will uh, circulate, circulate it around, right? So then what what they have what they have asking uh, the construction owners to do or the company owners to do so com company owners basically before starting the work right so then they have been asked to do a to do their homework so they have to buy thermometers so one thermometer is around so that is to check uh, the uh, uh, the temperature body temperature of the construction workers one thermometer is around 15000 so 15000 20000 so at least you need five Right, so that is that 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 brings you hundred thousand. Right, so that is not part of the contract. So who is going to pay this? Contractor has to bear this cost. Right, so then uh, uh, so again they have to buy this uh, disinfection materials. Uh, uh, the main two materials that they are proposing is seventy percent uh, alcohol based solution, uh, uh, and then uh, sodium hypochlorite, 0.1 percent. Right, so this. Uh, with this, they, they were asked to uh, install uh, uh, hand washing facilities at the entrance of the uh, site, right? So then, uh, like, uh, I'm not sure whether you have noticed or not. So this, uh, uh, like, when you use the hand washing facilities with a tap, uh, so when you use it uh, in your hand, so you, you it will again uh, kind of a room, there is a room for this virus to be get uh, spreaded around. So if it is uh, foot operated, that would be the ideal situation. And then I have seen this, uh, I have come across this uh, uh, nerd center uh, has developed one of the foot operated uh, uh, hand uh, 
taps. So that, that is uh, highly recommended. And then uh, it is, they were asked to keep soap and hand sanitizer. Uh, uh, and then, uh, so you probably know that uh, the, from the uh, bottom of these uh, shoes or the, from the foot, uh, this uh, coronavirus can be spread around the site. So then they were asked to keep a, a liquid uh, in a tray and then asked to these construction workers to kind of wash their uh, bottom of their shoes in order to uh, stop this uh, uh, spreading around the uh, construction site. And then uh, hand sanitizers, hand sanitizers, if there is a fingerprint machine, you know, like always key, uh, clean these uh, uh, fingerprinting machines uh, using these hand sanitizers. Uh, and then uh, regularly in, uh, disinfecting all the tools, equipments and machines every four hours. Like every four hours, they were asked to clean the uh, tools, equipments, and then the uh, metal surfaces, right? So metal, metal surfaces, like it says, uh, so there is a certain period of time this uh, coronavirus can stay around, right? So then uh, metal surfaces, it can stay around for five days. So you, uh, it was asked to clean these metal surfaces using minimum 70% uh, alcohol-based solution. And all non-metal surfaces, 0.1% sodium hypochlorite, right? A door handles, knobs, to be cleaned regularly, right? And then floor furniture must be cleaned regularly. And then asking PHI to come. This is this like, like, these are the kind of, at the construction site. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the contractor or the employer or the engineer or the project manager has to do this. So asking PHI to come to the site and do the inspections. So that is a big task, right? So then they have to do this. And then uh, I mean, uh, they, they were asked to, uh, uh, like not to give disinfection chambers, right? So these chambers are now popular and it, it uh, now previously it was popular and then uh, there was a circular saying no disinfection chambers because it can damage your lungs, right? So then it is not recommended to have disinfection chambers. Unfortunately, when this construction, I, I, I call a couple of construction company owners, uh, like young, uh, small scale ones, and then they bought a couple of uh, disinfection chambers like that was one uh, like one chamber is around 100,000 so then they like because of the the this information they got the information late so then uh, they spent that in the, that money so there's no use of these chambers now. right so then thermometers they have to check the uh, body temperature regularly and then uh, personal protective equipment this is apart from the uh, uh, the usual construction personal protective equipment so face mask, uh, so it has been like three layer surgical face mask. That is, uh, they do, those are the face masks which we use for, like, give me one second. <laughs> These face masks, right? So uh, they were like surgical face masks, uh, but only one time use, like you can't use for more than one time. And then I, I think I, I, I showed you guys that, uh, like with the uh, face portal uh, kind of a gadget, right? So then uh, N95, so then N95 is not uh, very hard to find and very, very expensive as well. It is kind of not recommended, but fabric mask, so uh, fabric mask, uh, like three layers inside, two layers outside. So they are available, it is around 70, uh, 70 rupees uh, in the market. Uh, so. Then what, to, what, they, what the workers have to do is they have to wash it and then clean it, right? So then uh, they can hot water, they can put it into three minutes. Or else if you use a 0.1% sodium hypochlorite solution, they have to use it for 10 minutes, right? So if they don't clean it, there's no point, right? So like some people, what they do is uh, they use this uh, thick um, uh, uh, clothes and then they believe that, okay, since the thickness is high, uh, uh, the uh, this part droplets will not go in, but it is not the thickness, the size of this uh, uh, this uh, this space, no. So then, the, because of the, the point is the droplet should not go inside. That is the that is only only uh, uh, logic here. So fabric mask. So then uh, one is not enough because once you have use it, you when you once use it for one time, so then you have to clean it and then you need another mask. So then two masks you have to provide, right? And then face shields. Gloves, boots. This is these are usual stuff which we use, and then uh, accommodation and common areas that we have to pay special attention because uh, 
usually we have seen that uh, this is the dengue situation as you can remember that uh, this picture uh, so this is the accommodation right so how can you keep a uh, social distancing here how can you uh, keep a uh, proper high uh, hygienic conditions here right so then uh, you need to have proper uh, sleeping facilities that is to this is i got this from osha guidelines shall contain at least 50 square feet of floor space floor space for each occupant at least seven foot ceiling shall be provided i don't know whether they can provide this or not but this is the guideline right in room where workers cook live and sleep a minimum of 100 square feet per person shall be provided sanitary facilities shall be provided for storing and preparing food so so then uh, lot of work so then they have to restructure their uh, uh, cooking rooms uh, their uh, accommodation areas their common areas and everything right and then beds so uh, similar facilities shall be spaced not closer than 36 inches uh, that is three foot uh, three feet and then uh, both laterally and end to end shall be elevated at least 12 inches from the floor so three uh, three feet uh, from the distance uh, from the end to end and then uh, 12 inches, one and a half uh, feet uh, from the floor, right? So then uh, here, see? So there is like one scaffolding going and then uh, scaffolding structure, you put a uh, wood like a uh, plank and then uh, you ask the workers to uh, sleep. And then this uh, uh, bricks are there for this, like this not, uh, this uh, sheet getting uh, like stop, sheet. this sheet is moving uh, here and there, right? So then they have to restructure these companies, they have to restructure these things. All living quarters shall be provided with windows, the total of which shall not be. So basically windows should be provided and then there should be proper ventilation. If you look at the current situation, so there are no windows, only uh, aluminum uh, uh, provided. And then, uh, so there is no ventilation at the moment. No? So only they have provided two mosquito nets, right? So. So then they are in a really, really bad situation. Toilet facilities adequate for the capacity of the camp shall be provided. So, so I heard uh, in a Navy, Belisera Navy camp, uh, so, uh, because of the, uh, uh, they were using common uh, toilet facilities, that is the way it got widely spread, right? So then uh, these toilet facilities has to be cleaned properly and regularly uh, using this uh, disinfected material, which I have mentioned before. These are the disinfected materials. And uh, they were shared, it has to be clean, uh, uh, keep in a very uh, good condition. Laundry, hand washing and bathing facilities. Uh, hand washing, basin per six persons and shared facilities. And uh, the list go on and on and on, right? So then uh, the other thing is, uh, other thing is, uh, mainly these construction workers, they they coming from a different social cultural background, right? So they share uh, like they they usually they sometimes they share they don't have proper hygienic uh, practices. Uh, they might be sharing their uh, personal equipment like uh, razors or, or like uh, towels or clothes or whatever. So that is very uh, uh, unhygienic. It is uh, like asking for corona, and then they sometimes uh, smoke. Right, so then when they smoke, they share the same cigarette, right? So then that is one reason why this uh, Jaila uh, people got highly infected in that uh, in that area because of this, they were sharing the same cigarettes and all that. So then they like they were taking al consuming alcohol, taking alcohol, and then uh, uh, cigarettes uh, or the, uh, uh, the smoking uh, are two major uh, uh, drawbacks like like it's, it's really asking for a corona at this moment point of time because it will reduce your immunity right uh, and then the uh, corona is a recipe how somehow we call, uh, pronounce it so then uh, smoking it will really bad because of it it, it, will, it will it can affect your lungs right so uh, so second thing is you need to have a proper healthy meal, right? So then because it will boost your immune system. But uh, at the moment, construction workers, they might not be getting proper healthy meals. So they, are, they don't have good working conditions. Uh, uh, dormitories are not up to the, up to the standard level. So uh, there are a lot of homework, these construction companies, a lot of investments they have to do, a lot of restructuring. 
and next thing is uh, so there should be a proper emergency and disaster management safety uh, or the uh, covid safety committee that we can call in place because uh, uh, now uh, uh, let's say your uh, construction is located in a uh, now there are two districts now like Colombo and Gampa still standing strong and then uh, the rest are the excessive district you know? uh, rest, rest of the districts so then if there are two high risk uh, uh, districts Colombo and Gampa uh, the all the most of the time they most of the construction going in these the, these two districts right so then uh, they are high risk zones and then uh, when the workers coming from uh, uh, outside this high risk zones so they had like uh, the companies they have to be really really careful when they you, you are bringing the workers from outside also uh, if they are worker the site is at outside this high risk zones then uh, the, like if the worker is from a high risk zone going to the uh, not a high risk zone so then uh, they that that also ha has to be a be a one concern so what what these construction companies has to do is they have to prepare a questionnaire or a checklist uh, before coming the construction workers, so they have to ask their supervisor or the engineer or the person who are responsible for the construction workers, give them a call and then ask them where do you live, uh, what is your current, uh, do you have any symptoms, uh, and otherwise do you have your family members, do they have any symptoms, uh, likewise they have to check. Uh, only proper screen after only proper screening the construction workers has to be recruited so then uh, highly recommended to recruit workers from the like let's say it is not a high risk zone so let's say it is in uh, Kurunagala so then workers if they can hire the workers from that area that is the most ideal situation and then asking not to work like asking workers to stay at the construction site so then dormitories and accommodation has to be uh, uh, upgraded and then asking workers to stay at there so companies what they can do is they can prioritize their construction activities right so then they can start with the bare minimum let's say if they start they can start with uh, simple activities like surveying so they that surveying they don't need much of a, a crew one or two three people one couple of people they can uh, uh, they can uh, keep the social distancing, right? So then some other activities like housekeeping at the moment, they are still, they are, we are trying to start. So then prioritize, proper schedule must be prepared or the updated schedule must be prepared. So first they have to get a hang of this situation. Only then after that, they have to go for the second round where they have to bring all the construction workers in. Otherwise, if it's going to start all the construction activities at once, is going to be a mess so then uh, first start with small simple activities with less number of people and then move forward with uh, with the uh, with the time how the time progresses right so second thing is so then uh, they have to bring the material from when you are crossing one district to another so they have to get curfew passes and then the construction workers also has to get construct uh, curfew passes if they are crossing districts and all that so that also has to be addressed and then uh, they have to check about these uh, the continued sub, sub continues up supply, continuing so supply of these disinfection materials so this uh, 0.1 sodium hypochlorite and then you know, uh, is a 70 percent uh, alcohol based solution and all that that has to be properly uh, supplied uh, uh, and also, there should be a poster, so the awareness material should be placed uh, at the construction working premises because uh, construction workers, as I mentioned, they are coming from different uh, social cultural background, right? So then, uh, there is a big education pro uh, process it has to be uh, carried out because they, are, they, they, they don't follow these hygienic conditions. Uh, so then uh, education is one big thing that uh, that these construction companies facing uh, uh, and also there should be proper protocols in place uh, what to do if there is a case or a suspected case reported so what to call, whom to call whom to be called and then uh, what is the emergency number and then where, where are the emergency vehicle and then what, what kind of pro pro protocol they have to follow how to handle these uh, cases and then uh, uh, the numbers uh, emergency numbers are all given as an annex to this national guideline so once i saw circular this information you can see them every number is there 
and then email addresses and everything is there and then uh, so then they know what to do and then this has to be properly educated pre in uh, beforehand so these things so it is a good like i why i like this kind of a uh, uh, setting up these kind of uh, guidelines and then the protocol is that because right we haven't had any preparedness before we haven't had we were not following any standard before only now we are getting used to these kind of standards so it is a good thing in a in a like uh, silver lining in a kind of a dark cloud right so then it's a good thing and uh, if any in any case if one person get infected in within this construction site that means that construction site has to be closed for 21 days so it is the site has the site will be closed so 21 days without any construction activity that means it's a big risk right so then you are taking that big risk you have to keep that in mind right so then uh, uh, so basically we are playing with fire so but we need to know fire we have done the assignment so then uh, once you control the fire you, you can do marvelous things but if you don't have any control if you are not prepared enough so then you will be you will be burned out so all if you like, imagine a construction company all the sites are closed down for 21 days that's like you are completely out from the market right so uh, construction workers as i was telling so the next step is they we need to educate them once they come to the site they, we have to ask them to uh, if you don't do this, you have there. You have to go home, and then uh, uh, you they have they have they need to ask to wear masks and then wash their hands and all that. Uh, so that 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 education process must must be followed. And then workers, as I mentioned, so they used to smoke and they used to have a, some all some kind of a alcohol percentage in their blood after a hard working day. So that oh, everything has to be finished, uh, like not not finished, like has to be uh, uh, el uh, eliminated from their their day to day practices. And uh, when they work at heights, so then there is a, there are elevators provided, right? So then these elevators are usually congested, right? So then uh, what they have to do is like uh, like they have to in order to keep the social distancing, they have to face this uh, the walls and then keep the uh, one meter. Yeah, so it is going to be diff uh, very challenging because we were not used to this kind of a standard uh, procedures at the at our construction site. We were used to uh, do work uh, like without any proper uh, arrangement, without proper quality uh, practices. So then uh, that connects to my today's lecture as well. So now we are we have to live with this with proper standards. So then how to move forward? So, government they have to come up with some kind of a guarantee that these companies, because the companies has to do uh, restructure in their accommodations, uh, uh, upgrade their facilities, uh, and provide these uh, thermometers and the disinfection solutions and all that. No, so that is part part of any of the contracts. So this is a new rule that's that you are putting in, right? So then government they have to ensure that. Because most of the time, this construction for these construction companies, the government is the client. One thing is government has to ensure that the the payments will be released for the previous previously finished work on time. Second thing is now they have lost two months. One is March and second is April. So due for these two months, uh, the government has to do some kind of a compensation, right? And then uh, thirdly. Uh, uh, government has to give a guarantee that future you will be getting funds uh, on time. So without this, uh, construction companies we can't survive, right? So then I'm only looking from a construction company point of view. That then you might be asking for the government point of view how they are going to survive. I, that is a very big question because this year, this is the year we have to pay the highest amount of uh, debt uh, uh, pay, payback amount. Uh, right uh, and I think the economist has ranked us uh, from the top six from the bottom we are we are we are, we are in the uh, very risky situation uh, in when it, uh, when it comes to the economy right so because our borrowings are high uh, we have to pay a lot of debts to this year so we are in a very bad position but still we have to expect 
certain uh, uh, certain benefits or certain uh, guarantee uh, from the government in order to sustain the construction work. And next thing is, uh, we have to move with this innovative construction techniques, whether you like it or not. So that is the way forward. So this is where you guys, this is where the where you guys can play a role, right? So right now, this is the chance for you guys to learn about new prefabrications, modular constructions. How what are the techniques? So then. Uh, now don't call, don't blame the uh, US the lecturers, your syllabus. There's no syllabus at the moment, right? So the syllabus is very dynamic. All the information is out there in the YouTube, uh, the COSI is offering, Udacity is offering, in LinkedIn you can follow courses. So it's all up to you uh, to get adjusted to the emerging market, right? So then like imagine a situation in a factory, in a close environment with lesser number of construction workers, with uh, with proper uh, social distancing, you can completely uh, create uh, plan a house and then you can completely construct a house there and then transport it back to the construction site. That is what they do here, right? So yesterday I was I had the chance to listen to one of these uh, lectures offered by uh, Professor Priyan Mendis. He's a pioneer professor in uh, this uh, modular construction and prefabricated buildings. And uh, he was talking about in, 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 in Australia, he's one of the biggest friends. So then one tall tower completely constructed using this modular prefabricated uh, technique, technology, right? So I heard, uh, so one of the Australian com car companies can, can go now from the market, a couple of companies, uh, manufacturing plants, they have to close down. So then uh, uh, the workers, they had no, no, no jobs. So then government decided, so, okay, we will start new companies. So then yeah, come up with new ideas. So then a new idea was, one of the new ideas was prefabricated buildings. Why? What are the, what are the benefits of prefabricated buildings? It, will, it won't get affected from weather. You can ensure the quality. So because the, I, I will talk about the quality in my lecture, right? So the, ensure, you can ensure the quality. You can control the production. And then uh, the social distancing because of this corona and all that, you can... Uh, manage properly right so construction is going to be changed it's all up to you guys so the uh, up to you guys uh, uh, to learn these uh, new trends otherwise as you can understand you can't work from home but you can work in a factory in a controlled en environment you can plan this uh, modular construct construction unit it's like the uh, if you if you are uh, when you are small it's like lego blocks no 3d printing completely pr printing a building and bring it back to the construction site so that is this is the future right so this is the time to do uh, the homework right so it's all young guys so learn about these things uh, so uh, once you graduate when you are working as a an engineer one day you can call like my my pleasure is one day if you if you like two three years lay down the road and then if you come come back and see me and then sir if you say, sir, I'm working in this company, or else if, I, if you post pictures in your Facebook or whatever, when I see you guys working in these modular construction companies and all that, so then uh, that will make me happy, right? So keep these things in mind. So uh, this is a new era, this is new normal. And then uh, previous, the way we practice our construction activities is not going to be applicable, might not be applicable in the future, right? So with that, I stop. This like this part of the lecture.